Welcome back, it's me Lou, and I'm here again for another action figure unboxing and review. And today, I am looking at this. The DC Multiverse The Flash. This is from McFarlane Toys. And if you're curious, this iteration of The Flash represents his appearance in the video game um, Injustice 2. Um, we've received a Flash figure already. Um, I think we've had two. We've had The Flash Rebirth... Um, and there was, it's not the reverse Flash, it's like, it, there's a Flash that comes with a, it's like a version of Batman, but it's like the Flash, and it comes with a Flash 2-pack, um, I don't know, the name escapes me right now. But, we are focusing on this today, um, so if you're familiar with the Injustice video games, it's, uh, they're developed by, um, the Mortal Kombat studio, um, was it Nether Realms? So not, and if you've played them before, uh, the play mechanics is like your standard one-on-one -on -one fighting game. Um, it takes a page out of Mortal Kombat, kinda. And they've had two video games. The first one came out many, many years ago, and the other one came out <laughs> many years ago also. And it's kind of cool that they're making uh, toys. I mean, they've made action figures of the Injustice characters before. It's nothing new. Um, DC Direct made some. They were. I think the first set were like, there might have been three and three quarter figures. And those came out with the first game. And so they were three and three quarters. They were small. And you'd get them like in double packs. Um, like I believe one double pack had, I think, like Deathstroke versus, I think, like Green Lantern or something. And they were pretty cool. Um, I think they were sized three and three quarters so they could compete with the Marvel Universe slash Infinite line. And that was Hasbro's. Marvel um, superheroes scaled at three and three quarters and uh, later on I believe Mattel when they had their DC Multiverse line of six inch action figures They were kind of getting their feet their feet wet also and in making injustice figures and there was an injustice Batman There was injustice Superman And I don't know if they ever made any other characters. I think there might have been an injustice Green Lantern also But over here we have the flash so this is Flash's appearance in Injustice 2. Um, as usual, we get the standard McFarlane DC multiverse flare for the boxes. It's pretty simple. Nothing, you know, it's just a nice rectangle with a really large window. It's good at framing the character and got, kind of have his um, speed accessories to make him look like he's lightning quick. Uh, on the back. That's nice fig photography of the Flash running. So I have the um, previous McFarlane release of the Flash, the Rebirth figure. Unfortunately, I don't have it with me right now. It's actually hanging adorned on one of my walls, and I'm just too lazy to get it. But this is a nice uh, figure. Um, the one thing I think the other the Rebirth figure has over this is that when it's packaged in the box, that one's actually in cool running action pose. Whereas this one, he's just kind of looking straight at you and I mean I think one reason why they might have done it also is so you realize it's a different figure because the flash he's his color schemes only two colors he's just golden red you know <laughs> so you know from a distance you might just think this is a the old figure but since they packaged him differently with a different pose and you kind of see I don't know more of him from a front view you'll re you'll realize that hey that's different so yep let's take this guy out and uh, see what it's all about. Okay, so first impressions, um, it's awesome. I like the texture a lot. I kind now uh, the t the costume designs in the Injustice video games I, it was for me. It was kind of a mixed bag. Some of the costumes I liked a lot. Others, uh, not so much. Like I had some issues with the Superman and Batman ones. Uh, Green Lantern was okay. I remember liking Lobo. Lobo was in the first game, I believe. And I remember liking his design. Because I don't think it deviated too far from what you expect out of Lobo. And this Flash one's cool. Um, you know, modern aesthetics with superhero costume designs, they're really big on applying textures to the costume. And you have... There's no shortage of that here. Um, if you look on his uniform, there's this kind of like scale texture but with like a hexagonal pattern running down his arms. 
Um, he kind of has like a micro texture up around his neck. Uh, his flash symbol is kind of a relief. It's kind of embossed out. So you can actually feel, run your hands over it and feel it. And it's nice. The shade of red. I'm not sure if it's if it's catching this on the camera. It's a little bit darker and kind of muted, but I'm looking on this computer screen and it looks a little bit brighter on, on the computer screen. Uh, his face is a nice sculpt. I don't know. He kind of looks a little chubby-cheeked, uh, but that just might be me. All right, let's get this guy out of his package. Now I could just cut this tie out, but I like the challenge of trying to like thread it through the hole. Okay, so here we have Injustice Flash. And it looks pretty neat. Um Man, this is pretty cool. Okay, so one thing about him that seems kind of off are his proportions. I noticed this in the box and I thought it might change once I got him out of the box, but uh, he looks, he, his upper half looks a little bit kind of squat. It looks like he should have another row of abs uh, and his upper torso should just be a little bit higher, like a, maybe of a quarter of an inch. And for some reason his shoulders, oh wow, okay. So he doesn't have a butterfly joint. He kind of has that weird, I don't even know how to describe it. It's almost like a larger ball joint within a ball joint kind of deal. So he has like a ball joint, I think, for his upper arm. But then uh, the socket it plugs into is like a larger, almost like ball joint. And it allows for some really cool range of motion. I'm not sure how much, what the range is, but the fact that you can like move it around in these weird positions is pretty neat. But there's a part of me that thinks it's kind of unnecessary because in all honesty, I don't think it allows for him to reach that much far over. You know, so I think it's, for me, it's a cool feature, but I kind of think that's a little extravagant and unneeded, and they could have easily taken it out and maybe dropped the cost of the figure. But it's it's very cool, it's very unique, it makes the fig figure feel a lot more premium. I like the costume. This is, I like this costume because it's a little understated, even though it's covered with so much texture on the material, um, it works for me, um... I'm always on the fence about the Flash in terms of having all these weird, like, uh, piping or trim around his costume. Like, if you've seen the the Rebirth Flash that McFarlane put out, it's covered in all these weird lightning kind of things around his costume, and I think it looks silly. I'm, I'm kind of a big fan of just the old Flash costume, where it was just predominantly red, and you just had the symbol, and he had the wings, and then the wings on the feet. I don't care too much for all the extra and I think unnecessary embellishments um, you know I like that the whole ad adage of you know just keep it simple stupid and it seems like the more complicated to make things there's always the risk of it just looking out of place or just doing too much and in terms of articulation this guy is amazing um, I'm kind of surprised that there's all right so let's go over the articulation real quick his head's on a ball joint, I think. To look up and down, side to side. And I stated earlier, there's a really ingenious kind of thing going on in the shoulder. It's almost like a ball joint within a ball joint kind of deal. But it it doesn't allow... It allows for some cool range of motion, but it's not like it, it extends the range of, range of motion, if that makes sense. Um, like, it doesn't allow for that much more movement. I mean, it's nice that it's there, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be groundbreaking in that he could do all, much more crazier poses. Um, he has a bicep cut, and the bicep—it's weird because it's not a—it's not a flat, even cut. It's—it's it's almost like they tried to purposely cut the the bicep so it kind of conforms with the shape of the muscle, and it doesn't allow it to rotate all the way out which is unfortunate 
Now, for example, like, I think I need to figure with a bicep cut. Like here, for example, here's a Marvel Legends cap. And then for his bicep cut, it allows you to, like, you could literally just spin it around. You know, the way it's cut, it's kind of, it, it conforms to the muscle, but it's done in a way where it allows for, like, full movement. This guy's bicep cut, it's almost cut, so it, it's almost like they kind of want to hide the cut. But at the same time, that hinders the range of motion, like... I can't rotate all the way around. You know, it, this is as far as it'll go. It'll just go. That's it. And it's it's almost at the point where it's like, why even bother? You know. But the detail is is really nice on this. It almost seems like this is one of those deals where um, parts of the figure were sculpted out first, and then the articulation was figured out later. Um, there's there's no faulting in terms of this guy's sculpting. His sculpting is superb. It's some of the best I've seen in a while. Uh, the amount of detail on his costume is awesome. This, the, cr the textures are so crisp, and the cuts are deep. It's really nice. Um, and, you know, start from the head up. Uh, for this head, it, you see, kind of has some lines engraved on the top of his cowl, and the way the lightning forms almost forms like eyebrows, which is kind of cool. Um, the, the lightning wings on his on his ears you don't have to worry about them snapping because it's kind of a rubbery plastic so that's really nice and then when you look at the textures on his neck it's just really fine texture some nice trim and piping around here some nice wrinkles and folds there's they're subtle uh, and they're not overstated uh, we have some nice wrinkles and folds around his chest as I mentioned earlier, his emblem is kind of like a relief. It's kind of em embossed. Yeah, I mean, the sculpting in this figure, one of the best I've seen in a, in a while. Um, it does not disappoint. Um, going back to the articulation, double jointed elbows, the wrists. Uh, I don't know, they can spin around. It's kind of what you expect. Um, kind of has an ab crunch. Uh, Below the chest and between the abs, you just uh, you could turn around. Ab crunch, swivel at the waist. And his legs, you could kick up. Now, his crotch piece here, it's almost like a, it's like, it's almost like a, a rubber diaper. It's <laughs> if I had to describe it, because it's a soft, rubbery plastic, and you, you can see it flex up when he kicks out. You see? It kind of. It's softer here, which is neat, but it's one of those things where I was kind of worried, like, you know, over time, does something like this deteriorate and start to crack? Like, um, you know, in some, in some weird ways, it looks really cool. It's an advancement in toy engineering, especially for action figures, but um, do I, you know, I might just prefer the harder plastic. And here I am tapping Captain America's crotch. You know, this is this hard plastic. It's not covering any gaps. Where this is trying to cover the gaps, it's made of a softer plastic. It looks a little bit more realistic. It does a good job of um, covering gaps, but at the same time, it's like, what's the longevity of this? You know, is this something they have to worry about? You know, two years from now, that's going to start cracking. Um, really, be I can't. I, I can't say enough about the sculpting on this. It's really amazing. Uh, this is a costume design, I, you know, it's like I said, the Injustice costumes, it was always kind of hit or miss with me, and I like this a lot. Um, I actually like this more than the Flash Rebirth figure. And in some ways, if you're unfamiliar with the video game, you can easily just tell yourself, you know, maybe this is a, a much more cinematic version of the Flash. Um, I mean, it's not going to look like the Snyderverse Flash, but uh, there's, there's a very realistic aesthetic about this where it kind of feels more real world. Than just wearing like spandex. And I don't know, the costume design's great. Uh, there's no thigh cut. Um, you have some motion of the of the upper legs where you could kind of twist it in or out, but it's not gonna you know, you don't have the thigh cut like you do with some figures where you could do this. It has double jointed knees, and they're pretty good about hiding the joints also. Um, whereas some figures I'm not sure if there's a... You could kind of make out the 
shape of the cut and where it's going to bend. Whereas this, it almost looks like a solid piece and the joints are just hidden really well. Uh, his, art, his ankles, they're nice and articulated. And as I mentioned, this is the Flash. So with the Flash, you want to get him in all those cool running poses. And this guy is not short on that. He could... If you want to make this guy look like he's running a marathon or racing Superman in, a, you know, in the 50-yard dash, go for it. Um, you know, let's see how well like a Marvel Legends figure could like, emulate that pose. It's nothing new. I mean, chances are it could, but let's give you an idea of, you know, the the range of motion and articulation that this figure has compared to others. It might be a fun, unfair example because these Marvel Legends are six inches, whereas the McFarlane are more seven, seven inch scale. So, you know, they're racing. This is a great figure. Um, if I had to rate it numerically, oh god, I think easy, easy. My first thought was a nine, but I'm not sure if that's being overly generous. Um, at the very least, eight and a half, eight and a half to a nine. Uh, this, I'm stoked to have them because right now the McFarland DC multiverse line of action figures it's so overpopulated with this a million different variations of Batman. Uh, you know, Batman sells. You know, plain and simple. That's why they have so many Batmans. Kids love Batman. Collectors love Batman. Batman has many different looks. He exists in many different universes. So, you can get your standard Detective Comics Batman. You can get your, you know, you might get a Batman by Goth uh, Gaslight. Uh, you might get a Batman from the future. You might get, like, Metal Batman, Death Metal Batman, um... Yet you know we've have a we've had a Green Lantern Batman. It's like it's it doesn't end. So for me to get a a, uh, a different character that's not Superman or Batman in the McFarlane line is awesome. Granted, we've already had a Flash figure, but this one is so different from the last one in terms of the sculpt and aesthetic. It's worth getting. And I, I've already seen. I think McFarlane's releasing a repaint of this in white, and it's, I think it's called like Hot Pursuit Flash. And he looks amazing in white. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about whether or not I want to get it. If I see it in the stores, I probably will, but I'm not sure if I'm going to go out of my way to pre-order it. Um, but it's awesome. I'm really, I'm really excited about this line. The, the McFarlane toys at first, I was kind of lukewarm to it, just because the characters they were releasing were like figs I already had. You know, granted they're made by a different company like Mattel or something, but you know, I already had so many Batman figures, I already had so many Superman figures, but the McFarlane stuff, you know, I've, I've been a fan of their toys since, like, you know, the original Spawn Wave, like, way, way back in the day where Todd McFarlane would actually be in the commercials and he'd be, he'd be in the Spawn Mobile and he'd shoot that missile at the wall and knock over. And they were known as Todd Toys back then. So, I mean, I've always expected a certain quality from the McFarlane line and it, it doesn't disappoint. Um, you know, they make some of the best action figures on the planet, period. You know, they set the... You know, I think Todd said it himself back in the day. You know, they set the bar really high for the other, the other toy manufacturers, and they started taking a page from his book because the stuff they were doing. So, since we're on the subject of the Flash, let's get a couple of other Flash figures and look at those. Okay, as I mentioned before, I I have I do have the Rebirth McFarlane figure, but it's, I'm just lazy and I'm not going to bother to get it, but. I do have these Flash figures. Um, this is a DC Direct Flash, and this is a Mattel Flash. And this was from, uh, um, I want to say, before they transitioned to doing the DC Multiverse line of toys. I think this guy still fell under the umbrella of the um, DC Universe Classics. And this iteration of the Flash is, I think, the New 52 Flash. As is this one, but I think the difference is that this guy has all the bells and whistles of all that like electricity effect on his costume, which I think the McFarlane um, Rebirth Flash has that also. So this this and the Rebirth Flash they're kind of like cousins in terms of their their design. The figure engineering on this guy is very outdated already. Um, the DC Collects, you know, their heyday was way 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 back when. 
And we're talking about, I don't know, maybe like... Tw this guy was dated... Uh, there's no date on here. But maybe like... We're talking about maybe like 2010, I think. I mean, was when this body style was kind of like very predominant. Maybe I might be off there because I don't know, but yeah, I mean this this figure design is old. The engineering's old. Um, DC the, the Mattel DC Classic stuff is uh, prone to a lot of um, quality control issues, uh, but they were cool. I mean, people still love them to this day. I like them a lot, and this flash is nice. Uh, the the reds don't match like the red torso here and his arms. This, I'm not sure if the, the camera's catching it, but they're actually two different shades of red. Um, even though this is a six inch figure, for some reason this feels a little bit smaller. Let me get cap out here. No, it's about they're roughly about the same size. Now this here is a. Uh, from DC. DC had their own line. I'm not sure if they're still messing around with making toys, um, but for a long time they had DC Direct, and uh, I think they're also doing something called DC Essentials. So this is Flash. I think he, this one represents the new 52 era, and it's a very basic costume. I kind of like Flash when he's just as simple as this. Um, you know, I don't... I mean, he has all the... So this guy has all the weird lightning markings on his body. This guy has them too. They're carved into his costume, but the effect isn't colored in. So what you have here is essentially the, these two figures represent the same character, but they're just produced by different manufacturers. So Mattel had the license to the six-inch fig, the six-inch line, and DC, you know, it's their character. They can do whatever the hell they want, but their figures were scaled upwards towards more so seven-inch, and they were articulated also, but. They were weird. Um, you could, they have the same amount of articulations you expect from a lot of other toys, but their posability does seem limited. Like even though this guy has the mobility in his legs and his knees and stuff, it's like it's single jointed. He lacks ankle articulation, so even though he could, you can move him around. It's not like it's, it's kind of pointless. But it's a nice figure to look at. There's a part of me that kind of believes that the DC Direct figures. We're more so about this being displayed in the packages. The packages were nice. The characters, they're framed and displayed perfectly in them. But the minute you got them out of the packages, kind of like, they felt weird. They didn't, they didn't feel like stuff you could play with. It's a nice figure nonetheless. I like it a lot. So yeah, here we have three different versions of the same character. Um, so uh, I highly recommend... The Injustice 2 version of Flash. I found this at Target. Um, and it's well worth the money. So, you know, go out there, hunt them down, or order them online. You know, if you need a Flash still to fill out your hall of superheroes, and, you know, you want to build up your own version of the Justice League, go for it. So, to wrap things up, my name is Lou. Uh, once again, thank you so much for spending time with me. Um, I know my reviews could be a mixed bag. Either it's... <laughs> either it's an hour of me just blathering about nothing or it's just 15 minutes of me you know talking gibberish and not making much sense but i hope you found something either entertaining or informative about this and you know hopefully you'll be able to walk away a little bit more educated and you know whether or not you want to buy this figure or if it sparks any interest about the character themselves maybe you'll you know you'll be more inclined to read a comic book or play a video game that features these guys because Nowadays, it seems like everyone's just more concerned about their adventures on the big screen or on streaming, but, you know, these characters exist in many forms. You don't need to wait, like, three years in between movies to get your next Avengers fix or Justice League fix. You know, just go to your local comic book shop or download, like, the Comixology app and just, you know, read about their adventures. You don't have to wait for the movies, and, you know, this probably increase your love for the characters even more and make you want to go out and hunt down other toys and other versions of this and made by other manufacturers because you know they've been making superhero toys forever now uh for when i was growing up there was barely any i mean they're, they're always there but it's not like it is nowadays there's so much superhero stuff that it's embarrassing <laughs> so go out there support the industry and i will talk to you later take care